So most people think that Key West itself is remote, but this place, this is even further remote than that. Though this is technically part of the U.S., it feels like you've dropped off a map. Marooned on a small island, its appearance on the horizon comes as a surprise to most. This place is really a mystery because it's this huge pile of brick and mortar masonry in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. When you first see this place, as it rises up out of the ocean, you can't help but feel amazed and in awe, but a little spooked. It's weathered the storms of decades or perhaps centuries, but still standing strong. Distinctive features betray some of the site's secrets, but others remain hidden. This place looks like a fort, but that's not all it was. This was not somewhere you wanted to end up. For some of the people who were sent to this island, it would become a deadly, deadly place. A vast abandoned structure emerges from the ocean, 70 miles beyond Key West. Adam Hollywood has been making regular trips out here for almost 20 years and knows the lay of the land better than most. This is the end of the barrier reef system that runs all the way from Miami out here to the middle of the Gulf. It creates the choke point for the entire Gulf of Mexico. So any large ships, they would have to sail to the south of us and then up into the Gulf of Mexico. When this place was built, the primary concern was piracy. The United States was interested in protecting shipping along the American coast and in the Caribbean. And so this provided a strategic location to police these waters. Piracy may have been the impetus for building here, but pirates weren't the only threat. Ever since the War of 1812, when the British threatened to cut off trade, the Gulf of Mexico became a strategically vital place for the new United States of America. This dominant military position is Fort Jefferson. Construction began in 1846. Initially, slaves were forced to carry out much of the heavy lifting, but details across the site show that change was on the horizon. This place is absolutely enormous. But if you look closer, you can also see some irregularities. Some of the bricks are different colors. In 1861, the American Civil War broke out. Remaining in Union hands, this island now became a potentially decisive position from which to blockade the South, if they could get the fort completed. The first two tiers are made up of a light tan or sandy colored brick, and all those bricks were coming from Pensacola, Florida. But when Florida joined the Confederacy, they stopped sending bricks from Florida. So then we had to start getting bricks from Brewer, Maine. So when you look at the third tier of this fort, you'll see that the bricks are much darker, redder looking bricks. Following the Emancipation Proclamation, the Union needed to find a new workforce. The site's location made the choice of whom to employ easy. Another thing with this island that was really important was its isolation, and that made it ideal for a prison. In this case, Union deserters would be sent down there. Lincoln would have them form a really crucial body of workers who would do all sorts of tasks on the island. While technically the fort was still not complete, soon enough was built to make it ready for war. From this fort here, Fort Jefferson, as well as Fort Zachary Taylor in Key West, the ships that worked out of these harbors were able to capture over 300 shiploads of supplies that were going to the south. While Fort Jefferson left its mark on the Civil War, one prisoner would come to leave their own imprint on the tail of this fort. Samuel Mudd was the most famous prisoner we had here in the Dry Tortugas at Fort Jefferson. He was convicted as being a co-conspirator in the assassination of President Lincoln. April 14th, 1865. In the final days of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln attends a performance at a theater near the White House. While he's watching the show, an assassin enters his box, shoots him in the head from behind, and then to escape, leaps out of Lincoln's box, 
catches his boot in some bunting coming down, breaks his leg. On the run, the assassin, John Wilkes Booth, calls in at the house of Dr. Samuel Mudd, who sets his leg. Mudd, however, fails to alert the authorities. Two days later, suspicion of Mudd's complicity are raised. It proved enough for a conviction. Samuel Mudd himself, he was sent here to the Dry Tortugas at Fort Jefferson to do a lifetime of hard labor. Mudd quickly learned this would be no easy ride. Tourists pay good money to come to places like this nowadays because of the beaches, because of the sea, the sun, but nobody wanted to go to Fort Jefferson during the American Civil War. It was, it was basically a one-way ticket to death. Danger lay in the most basic struggles to survive. One of the absolute challenges in a site such as this one would be the matter of fresh water. Clues in the cells show the lengths the inmates would go to in order to combat this situation. They actually dug trenches out in this cement floor and then bowls that would help store the water. And so you can see even today, we had a little bit of rain last night and uh, these trenches uh, help fill up these bowls of water. So these were just to help give the prisoners enough fresh water to survive. A large desalination system was installed to provide a steady supply of drinking water. But the storage of this water in barrels would inadvertently have deadly consequences. Something happens that is gonna drastically change things for Mud in prison. It's gonna completely change the trajectory of his experience there. In the 1860s, Dr. Samuel Mudd was sentenced to a life of hard labor here at Fort Jefferson, where an attempt to provide drinking water was about to turn sour. On August 18, 1867, a prisoner became ill. And within a short time, over 30 people would fall ill on one single night. Fort Jefferson had been hit by an outbreak of yellow fever this incredibly violent, horrible disease that could make people so deathly ill. It causes the yellowing of the skin, jaundicing. That's why it's yellow fever. Before long, the fort's doctor succumbed to the disease. Suddenly, responsibility for the sick fell to Dr. Mudd. It's been reported that he utilized the fort's design to aid his efforts. Yellow fever is a viral disease that is spread by mosquitoes. Their collection of water that they had desalinated had actually been a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And so that was really the heart of the problem. This hallway that was actually designed to help create a breeze to vent out the smoke and the heat from the cannons that would have been in these rooms. One of the things that Samuel Mudd did realize is that bringing people up onto the second level of the fort seemed to reduce the number of people that were getting sick here at the fort. The fact is, mosquitoes, they tend to stay low to the ground. They don't fly into a lot of strong wind. Alongside this, Mudd introduced far stricter hygiene procedures when dealing with the patients. And it worked. Mudd's efforts saved many lives. From his heroic efforts, Mud was granted clemency, and he was freed. He went home on an appropriately named ship, the Liberty. Once home, Mud resumed his own medical practice where he worked until his death in 1883. Fort Jefferson itself was never completed. In a rapidly changing world, it had been abandoned in 1874.